I, in my mind, I thought, what would happen if I didn't go up there? <laughs> <laughs> we have more music. <laughs> well, we're different every Sunday, and thank you for making this an event so soon, even before the talk, and that's good. <laughs> uh, the month of June is so empowering for me. I just love it. I just, you know, you sit there and you realize who and what we are. My God, we're powerful, magnificent beings, surrounded by this love energy. My gosh. And so this month we, uh, we honor uh, our birth fathers, and we give thanks for our birth fathers, but we also honor and recognize our spiritual nature, which we call the Father within. There's a lot of words that we can use to describe this tremendous love energy that we have and are, and the Father within is, works well right now. We'll be calling it some other things as we go along today. Uh, it has been said that uh, even before the recording of time, that the, the mankind itself has always realized that there is a, a power, a, a <coughs> invisible energy that surrounds every human being. This goes back to the ancients. The ancients felt that, that this power, this invisible presence, uh, radiates and is a source for power and for energy to enhance life. They believed that it was necessary and important for us to communicate with it, to sustain a life itself. And the more that we work with it, the more we evolve in, in uh, mind, body, and spirit, and the more that we become in harmony with the universe itself and, and experience uh, prosperity. And as we move forward this month in this idea of the Father within, we know, we know through our belief system and through the science of mind and religious science, that there's a power and a presence in the universe that's with us at all times, that responds to us, and that relates to us and also responds to our needs and guides and directs us. We know that is so. Uh, we just need to look around. Last week, uh, or a couple weeks ago, Joe, Joe Nelson was up on the platform. He's been looking for a job for how many years? And for many years, three years? Three years. Oh, three years. <laughs> and he never gave up on it. He just knew that it was going to happen. And this energy source is so magnificent. It's subtle in a way, because it took Joe through a lot of uh, hoops that he went through. And he ended up with two offers of two jobs. My gosh. And we can say, is this by coincidence, by accident? Uh, about two weeks ago, Bob Hand and I and uh, Alan Bush were going to get together in Fresno. And I was so excited, it was in my mind, my God, we're talking about putting together some mini workshops having to do with the Aramaic Jesus, and that's my bad, I love this stuff. And so I left Oakhurst heading for Fresno, and what was on my mind was, oh my God, we were going to actually pull this off. Of course, I want to experience, and so does Bob Ellen Bush, more than we want to experience ourselves, right Bob? But anyway, um, I uh, ended up at the, at the light in uh, Yosemite Lakes Park where you turn off to you and say, I'm there at the light, and it dawned on me, my God, this happened again. I don't remember going through Corsco. I mean, it was a shocker. I'm here. I don't remember Corsco. My mind was someplace else, living this beautiful idea that we were having. And so the thought came natural, who was driving the car, for God's sake? <laughs> you know? We have this power and this presence with us that's mysterious. We don't understand most of it. Uh, and, and something else happened a few days ago. Uh, we were going to the uh, um, hardware store, the Ace Hardware, and I'm driving to Awani. All of a sudden, I realize, and, and this uh, power and this presence works suddenly in our life. You know, and it sometimes takes over our activity. I'm driving, and I, I realize I'm going well below the speed limit, which is unusual for hands. <laughs> I'm usually looking in the mirror to make sure that the white car is not there behind me. And I wonder, what is going on here? And I'll be darned, I know someone thought of it, this doe and two bucks runs out in front of me. If I'd been going, if I'd been going even a, a mile faster, we would have collided with these beautiful, wonderful beings. Um, so many of us have experienced this thing. Uh, this idea of the subtleness of this energy force that seems to be taken over. There's a starter, a starter, a starter. There's a starter in o, uh, Oprah's magazine about Jay Lindo, and he presented this. And, and he said when he was eight years old, he had something happen to him that literally changed his life forever. He said he had been uh, hanging out with a gang of of youths that were older actually than he was that were out to. Actually, no good. 
and he was hanging out with this group. And what happens is he, uh, he had this thing, this one day this grandmother brought some pornographic literature uh, to the group, and they were all leaning forward looking at this literature. Another one had a knife, and he said something happened to him. This energy source uh, got into his head, and, and, and he thought, my gosh, do I want to be hanging out? This is no good for me. But this energy source told him subtly, back off, turn around, and leave the group. And he said he did. And he said that, that one situation that happened to him, oh gosh, many, many years ago, involved every decision he made for the rest of his life, that he turned and walked away from the crowd. Isn't that cool? That's us for old Jay. I mean, I'm glad Tony's here. Friday night was the most awesome experience we've had in this building, yeah. didn't we, Jane? You were yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, we had over 100 people here. Yeah. And this Tony, and Tony started talking about the Father, the Spirit within. And I poked Stella and I said, you know, he's giving my talk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and so and even Annabelle said she didn't know if she'd be able to make it or not. And I said, well, why come anyway? You're already hearing my talk from Tony. <laughs> but, but Tony was, was going through the Navajo perspective of what we're talking about this month, the Father within. And he said, there's the Father that shines its light on each one of us, always, always there, always present. The one mind, the one good, the power, whatever we want to call it, here's the Father. And he says, then there's the mother. He says, the mother is there to nurture and love that, that softness. And he says, you put those two entities together, and you have the one mind, the one power, and one presence, and we call it Spirit itself, we can call it the Father, call it whatever you want. And, and he went and through music and through music and through uh, songs and, and guitar and all the things that he did, he told us all about that. Um, what is so empowering about this month is the realization that this idea of this power, this energy force, uh, came about in the 20th century, when modern science realized that the, the spirit of God itself does exist, they called it by other names, uh, but in, 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 that, in those years, the realization was that there's a force, there's a power in the universe that responds to our emotions. And so today I want to give credit to Greg Braden. How many of you know about old Greg Braden? Pretty good author. He uh, wrote the book, the, uh, the Lost Mode of Prayer. Anybody read that book? Pretty awesome. We're going to use that uh, to kind of lead us all along today because it had so many insights as far as our shining forth the idea of this Father within. Well, anyway, Graydon says that modern science did, in fact, uh, discover in the 20th century the Spirit of God, he called it, the Spirit of God that there is an energy field out there that's very mysterious that responds to the human uh, emotions. And then he also quoted Max Planck. How many of you know that? I know Bob does. Max was uh, considered the, uh, the founder of quantum physics. What I like about all this is that what these ancients have been talking about for thousands of years, before Christ even, here's modern science in the 20th, 21st century saying, my gosh, the mystics were right. There is a power force out there that responds to, to human beings. And so Max Planck said not only that, that, that this energy field is not only there, but behind it there exists a conscious mind that's intelligent, that wants to respond to our greater good. All we have to do is speak to it gently, of course. So the question this month is not, does this field exist? Are we here to talk about the field that it is and a proven exists? No, we don't have to do that at all. We, we modern science, and we have proven it by example and by activity that it does. This. So, what's the problem then? What are we going to deal with today? How does it relate to each one of us? All of us has an opportunity to to decide how does this power, if it's there, how does it relate? How will it enhance my life experience? What do I need to do? How do I relate to it? How do I speak to it? It's kind of interesting. Um, years ago, I was in Northern California. And uh, you know, it gets pretty warm there. You have to wear gloves to open your car door uh, during the summertime. But one day, and I was a friend with the, uh, with the, uh, the tribal leader of the uh, Pit River Indians. 
And one day he came to me, and I was the superintendent of the school at that time, and he came to me and he says, Angela, what we need to do, we need to take a trip up to Mount Shasta and visit the Rain Rock. And he said, we need to do that. We need to do it soon. We need to take a group of us and go up there to Mount Shasta and visit the Rain Rock. I said, fine with me. I will say yes. Let's do it. But on the way, he said, it's something very important, Angelo. We should not and we cannot pray for rain. In fact, we cannot pray for anything because it won't happen. Wow. Well, I had been in, in, in religious science since 1970. For only a few months, I was a member of this religious science church in Reading. And I thought, my God, here's a Pitt River Indian chief giving me a lesson in our own philosophy of new thought. What a glorious day this was. It was just amazing. And, the, and so this whole idea of you don't pray for anything, that comes as a shock to everyone in this room, I would imagine, because we're always praying for something. So what we did, we, uh, we, we honored that idea. So how are we going to ask for rain? If we pray for rain, it ain't going to happen. And so we got up there, and we danced around this rock. We were chanting. We were doing everything in our power to feel the rain as it comes down. We meditated. We could see the clouds forming, and we really lived it. We became the rain. And he said, we don't pray for rain. We pray rain. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. We pray rain. And lo and behold, the next day, what happened? The clouds formed, and it rained. Ready. It was kind of, kind of neat. Greg Braden had the same experience in that lost moment. When I read that, I thought, oh my God, that's the same experience I experienced in 1970. Here's Greg Braden talking about New Mexico, the northern uh, high desert of New Mexico. But it wasn't the Pitt River Indians in this case. It was another Indian tribe. And, when he, and this person, David, he didn't want to use the right name, so he used this David. But David said almost the same thing that the Pitt River Indian said. He said, we're going to not pray for rain. If we pray for rain, it ain't going to happen. We're going to pray rain. And so they did. Because when we commune with spirit, we need to come to one realization that if we're praying for something, we're telling the universe that it no longer exists, that it doesn't exist. And when we look at our belief system, we know that, that our, our nature is harmony, love, and abundance. It's there already. So if I pray for something, if I pray for health, if I pray for, for rain or whatever, what we're telling the universe <coughs> is this. We're telling the universe that it's missing. And I think we, we, what we do at this point to really get a handle on this, we need to take a look at this whole idea of the one mind and how we relate to it. Because we define our experience by our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings, and those thoughts, emotions, and feelings are reflected and mirrored back to us by the one mind. And if I say there is no rain, there is no health present right now, we're telling the, the, the one mind to reflect back to me, no rain, no health. Does this make any sense? Mm -hmm. It is so awesome because this month we can take a realization as to what we need, really need to do to enhance our life experiences. And I, we can go to the Native Americans, our beloved Tony, and, and Ross Montgomery was the guy's name, Ross, from the Pitt River Indian tribe, the Navajos, and learn from their, these ancient people, their experiences. How do you talk to the, to the source of all there, there is? And so we come to realization is, hey, you know something? There's not anything we need to do. We need to change how we speak and how we relate to this divine energy that's with